So today we'll be starting with a new topic of uh, resolution of force into force and couple system. In this topic we will see how to transfer force from one point to another point without changing the effect of the force. Now take an example of a body on which a force is acting. Let us say that this is a point A on that body. On this point the force is acting in this direction. Okay. And let us say that we need to transfer this force from point A to point B. Okay. But I do not want to change the effect of the force. Alright. That uh, this force is going to have some effect on this entire body. Right. And this point B, since it is there on the body itself, therefore this force is going to have some effect on this point B also. If I consider a point B to be a very small particle on, on a large body and uh, let's say, I just assume. So this force is going to have some effect on this point B as well. Now force generally has two effects. First is the translation effect and the second is the rotation effect. So translation means that this body will move either in X, Y or Z direction. Okay, so that movement in a linear manner that is called as translation. And second is the rotational effect. That is this body will rotate about this point B due to this force. Correct. So what we essentially need to have is that when we transfer this point, transfer this force from point A to point B, I do not want to lose that effect of the force. So I still need to have the translation. I still need to have the rotation. Now this translation, this is caused by the direct effect of the force itself. That is if the force is carrying uh, in a certain direction, if the force is acting in the certain direction, it is going to uh, carry that particular object in that direction. It is like, uh, uh, let's say that you have a car that uh, you are trying to uh, push okay let's say you're standing here and you're trying to push okay this car so you are applying force in this direction what you uh, expect the effect of that force is that the car will move in this direction right so that is the direct translational effect of the force uh, sec now the rotational effect this is caused by the moment of the force so we have learned that a force also has a moment uh, that it, it can also basically cause a moment at a particular distance at a particular perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force so that due to that moment we could see that this body could rotate about this point O or this force could rotate about that point O so we do not want to lose that as well what we can do is that we can simply transfer the force on this point B and then add the moment at that point how much ever moment it was going to cause when it was at point A. Now you can see that the effect, the end effect on the body remains the same. That is because of this force, the body can still translate in this direction. And because of this moment, the body can still rotate about point B. Okay. So that is how we can uh, transfer a particular force to uh, that particular uh, to another particular point let us understand uh, what if instead of force we have a moment at point a how to transfer moment from point a to point b we need to understand what effect the moment is going to have uh, on point b when it was acting at point a okay so a moment has only a rotational effect so a moment at point A is only going to cause the rotation at point B. So even when we transfer it to point B, we do not have to do anything else, but directly just transfer it, transfer the moment directly. So a moment will be transferred as it is to the next point. We do not have to take into consideration anything else, just the rotational effect of the moment. Next, resultant of non-concurrent force systems Till now, if you remember, whenever we found a resultant of a particular force system, always that force system was a concurrent force system. We never found resultant of a non-concurrent force system except while we were uh, solving that Varignon's theorem problem. That time the forces were non-concurrent. But we uh, just did it by the usual way. 
without understanding the underlying principle of how we are finding the resultant of a non concurrent force system here we understand that so let us see a concurrent force system will have a resultant somewhat like this we have seen uh, this this diagram before as well and we generally find the resultant as under root of summation fx square plus summation fy square this is how our resultant is formed for a concurrent force system but what if there are forces that are acting in a random manner and all are non concurrent forces okay so i will take uh, the way how we we need to proceed with such kind of problems is that we need to consider any one point on that uh, entire uh, body preferably uh, if if the point is origin if if we have decided what is the origin of that on origin point on that body we can take that point so let us say that i am taking this point a so just now we understood that how we can transfer forces from one point to the other point right so that is the same procedure i am going to apply all these forces which are randomly acting at different points i am going to bring them together at one point okay so let us say that this f and uh, f1 and there is the perpendicular distance from point a is d1 so this f1 is going to cause a moment of f1 multiplied by d1 okay and currently uh, let us not get into the sign convention which will be negative which will be positive i'll just be showing their directions here so i'm translating this force at this point and i have a moment of m1 okay so i have uh, transferred the force from one point to the other point similarly i will do for this f2 as well let us say that d2 is the perpendicular distance from line of action of f2 to this point a so i will translate this f2 and i will have a moment of m2 because of f2 same way f3 so i translate f3 and i get its moment as m3 and then we have f4 so it is acting at a perpendicular distance of d4 i translate f4 and i write its moment as m4 now you see what we have done we have converted a non concurrent force system into a concurrent force system and now i can find it with this right so now once it has become a concurrent force system i can now easily find my r uh, r value by using the summation fx square and summation fy square right so this is the underlying principle of how we can uh, find resultant for a non concurrent force system we'll be solving few examples in that you will understand how how we are actually doing it okay so this uh, you see that there were many moments here due to all the forces f1 f2 f3 f4 we had moments m1 m2 m3 m4 and all have their uh, respective signs so some are positive moments some are negative moments so what we can do is we can take the summation of those moments and we can write it at that that particular point as summation m okay uh, and now coming to this point if you remember in the varignon's theorem problem numerical all were non concurrent forces the procedure even though we did not know at that point that this is how non current concurrent force system has to be dealt with the procedure was the same actually we found the resultant as summation fy and then we also put moment at every point wherever we were taking like uh, first i took point a if you remember and then at point a i found summation of moments then i put that moment on point a okay so that was like uh, that was like the same thing that bringing all the forces to point a and putting the summation of the moments on point a okay anyways you can you can always check that uh, and uh, try to understand how it is related to this non concurrent force system problem <coughs> now we can always find the resultant of all these forces that resultant can be r using the varignon's theorem here what i can do is that summation of moment that we had now r will be of course originating from the point because uh, we are finding the r for this concurrent force system 
and we also have this moment now r can be shifted appropriately such that it can be shifted at a distance d such that it causes the same moment m at uh, at this point a so we are shifting this r at a suitable distance of d such that it has this translational effect of all these concurrent force systems plus now it also has the rotational effect at this point m okay so this is how we need to go ahead with the non concurrent force systems all right now let us see what if we have multiple moments on on a particular body how we can find the resultant of of these non concurrent moments so it is it is nothing but directly we can shift moment from one point to the other point because uh, uh yeah like we can bring all these moments together and just sum them up at that point summation m okay here i will write summation m so this uh, so, uh no for moments it is very simple for force we have to do the translation and put a moment on that point resultant can be uh, uh described in three ways first is we can have this pure resultant in force form okay in this body if you see then the resultant is only uh, depicted in a force format so this resultant is only as a force this is one way of showing a resultant even though there was a moment here we excluded that moment and we shifted our resultant so as that resultant gives the effect of that moment okay so we removed moment completely from this force system second we can have a resultant as pure moment this is only applicable when there are uh, the when the loadings are in terms of moment only okay and when there is no translational effect especially so in this case we can have a resultant as a pure moment third case is that we can have the resultant as force and a moment combination of force and a moment that is if i do not shift this r and i keep this moment also so i can say that my resultant is in the form of r and summation m or moment and force this is how we can uh depict our resultants and this is how we can show our resultants in different formats uh that's it for today's lecture in the next lecture we'll be solving a numerical on a resultant of non concurrent force systems